kung mamarapati niyo po dadagdang po ito isa sa mga siguradong hindi maiwasang hinaharap natin araw-araw ay ang basura while we try to reduce recycle and reuse waste there is no doubt the first and foremost we produce them mayigit kumulang na parating kilo ang average na basura ng bawat Pilipino araw-araw Senador Rafi Tulfo nagpasa sa Senate Bill No. 2267 Waste to Energy Act. Napakaganda nitong batas kasi alam naman natin lahat na kahit saan ka tumingin basura ang nakikita mo kaya kung magiging batas ito napakaganda dahil mapapakinabangan na ito lahat lalo na ang malalaking negosyante na yan. Kasama dito ni Senador Rafi Tulfo ang apat pa na Senador Mig Zabiri Francis Tolentino Bong Revilla at Winga Chilian, Narito ang video panuuri natin ang paliwanag ng senador at kung hindi ka pa nakasubscribe magsubscribe ka na dito sa ating channel Balita TV para palagi ka updated sa mga balita dahil iba na ang may alam. Mr. Energy himself, Senator Rafi Tulfo is recognized. Good afternoon Mr. President, my esteemed colleagues. I'm honored to sponsor today Senate Bill No. 2267 under Committee Report No. 91 or the Waste to Energy Act. We always say there are only two sure things in this world. That is death and taxes. Kung mamarapati niyo po, dadagdang ko ito. Isa sa mga siguradong hindi maiwasang hinaharap natin araw-araw ay ang basura. While we try to reduce, recycle, and reuse waste, there is no doubt that first and foremost, we produce them. Mayigit kumulang na kalahating kilo ang average na basura ng bawat Pilipino araw-araw. 15 kilos kada buwan at 180 kilos kada taon. With a population of over 100 million, the Philippines produce more than 21 million metric tons of trash each year. The Environmental Management Bureau has forecasted that 92 million metric tons of trash would be produced in the country between 2022 and 2005. Currently, Sanitary landfill is the primary long-term method of solid waste disposal under RA 9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000. But sanitary landfill requires vast parcels of land to accommodate our ever-growing waste production. Unfortunately, land is limited and it is not the picture-perfect solution to our garbage problem. In fact, it is a major source of pollution. The most pressing environmental concern regarding landfill is the release of methane gas. As the organic mass in landfills decompose, methane gas is released. Methane absorbs the sun's heat approximately 80 times more than the carbon dioxide, making it one of the most potent greenhouse gases and a huge contributor to climate change. Also, the creation of landfill destroys natural habitats for wildlife. Hectares of land are taken from our wildlife just to accommodate our trash. Landfills also leak hazardous substances which contaminate nearby water sources. Mari po ito magdulot ng iba't ibang sakit sa atin. The pollutions from landfills pose a threat to the health of those who live and work nearby. A study in New York found that there is 12% increased risk of congenital malformations in children born to families living within a mile of hazardous landfill site because of the odor, smoke, noise, bugs, and water supply contamination. Given the inev inevitable garbage production coupled with the problems and dangers posed by landfills, we have to resort to an alternative. All things considered, Waste to energy is a viable alternative to landfills, or better yet, it will supplement landfills as a way to manage your waste. Waste to energy plants convert non-recyclable solid waste materials, materials into usable heat, electricity, or fuel through a variety of processes including combustion, gasification, pyro pyrolization, and landfill gas recovery. These processes are what we call waste to energy, or as what I would like to call it, finding waste to energy. Properly executed, waste to energy plants could reduce 2,000 pounds of garbage to ash that weighs between 300 to 600 pounds and reducing the volume of waste by about 85%. 
ang kalahating kilong basura na pinuproduce ng kada taon ay mareduce sa 65 grams na lamang. But of course, it is important to highlight that enhancing waste management requires a holistic approach encompassing essential aspects such as efficient waste segregation, recycling programs, public education, and regulatory enforcement. To achieve the best results, waste to energy initiatives should be implemented alongside other sustainable waste management practices. Hindi naman po natin kakalimutan at papalitan ang mga pulisiyang gumagana na. Holistic po at hindi one track ang pag-iisip. The good thing about waste to energy is that it does not only solve our garbage disposal problem, it also mitigates our concerns on energy. The frequent occurrence of rational, rotational brownouts has become a harsh reality for our citizens. This disruption not only affects our productivity, but also hampers the delivery of essential services, such as healthcare, education, and public safety. A few months ago, we experienced a red alert and the DOE foresees around 15 yellow alerts may be issued this year. These alerts signify that our energy reserves are dangerously low, leaving us vulnerable to potential blockouts and disruptions. And so we look to waste, waste to energy to increase our energy supply. Ang kasabihang, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Dito po, one man's trash is another man's kuryente. May kuryente po sa basura. In many progressive countries, including Japan, Sweden, South Korea, and Singapore, the waste to energy technology and system has long been relied upon. Hindi po groundbreaking itong konsepto na ito. We are simply applying the best practices already adopted and proven effective by other countries. We will make sure that we will not compromise our environment in exchange for this valuable electricity. In Sweden, the energy supply to the district heating network from waste to energy plants provides enough heat in the winter to warm 1.25 million apartments and 680,000 houses each year. In the Philippines, there are currently 13 waste to energy plants. Only six are operational. There is a growing clamor among LGUs such as Ormoc City, Quezon City, Clark Special Economic Zone, Cebu City, Davao City, and Naga City for waste to energy plants. And while we have the DNR administrative order on the guidelines governing waste to energy facilities for the integrated management of municipal solid waste and the DOE department circular pres prescribing the policies and programs to promote and enhance the development of biomass waste to energy facilities, we must institutionalize the legal framework to waste to energy through a law. This will ensure predictability in the investment of the private sector and to provide support to the LGUs. This way, we ensure investors that waste to energy facilities will be supported, regulated, protected by the government. Now, let me lay down the salient points of the bill. Number one, the bill is technology, technology neutral. This means it can accommodate not only the existing waste to energy technologies, but also future innovations in this field. This flexibility is crucial in a rapidly evolving technological landscape. The bill does not favor or exclude any specific waste to energy technology. The only requirement is that the waste to energy plants should not emit poisonous and toxic fumes into the environment. Two, it defines the roles of various government entities such as the National Solid Waste Management Commission. NSWMC will ensure streamlined standards, criteria and guidelines for facilities and identify and recommend potential clustering of LGUs for a common waste to energy facility. The DOE will issue permits to facilities and determine the standards criteria and requirements applicable to each kind of waste to energy facility. The DNR will ensure compliance with environmental requirements. The DOH will check compliance with health standards. And the LGUs will provide logistical and operational support for the processing of waste to energy feedstock and enter into a clustering arrangement 
for a common waste to energy facility. Three, the bill mandates the inclusion of waste to energy strategy in the Philippine Energy Plan and every national, provincial, and local waste management framework. The inclusion marks a significant shift towards a more sustainable and diversified energy portfolio. It recognizes the immense potential of waste as a renewable energy source and positions waste to energy as a fundamental pillar of our national energy strategy. Number four, the bill authorizes LGUs to enter into clustering arrangements and public-private partnerships, PPPs, for establishing waste to energy facilities and provide standards to the determining processing fees of waste to energy facilities. It acknowledges <coughs> that waste management is a shared responsibility between the public and private sectors. By engaging private entities to PPPs, we can tap into the expertise, technological advancements, and financial resources, accelerating the deployment of waste to energy facilities. Number five, it ensures the waste to energy facilities are not harmful to public health and the environment. It requires health impact assessment together with environment impact assessment prior to construction and operations of waste to energy facilities to ensure the safety of each facility. This comprehensive assessment ensure that potential health risk associated with the facility's operations, emissions, and waste management processes are thoroughly evaluated. This, they will be prohibited from emitting poisonous and toxic fumes into the environment, which are defined as any emissions and fumes which are beyond internationally accepted standards by the World Health Organization Air Quality Guidelines and the Philippine Clean Air Act. This ensures that the air quality of communities surrounding the facilities are within safe and acceptable limits. It also mandates that the segregation, collection, transfer, storage, and transfer of waste to energy feedstocks and waste treatment processes of facilities are compliant with Ecological Solid Waste Management Act. Moreover, the bill explicitly prohibits the use of imported waste as a feedstocks for waste to energy facilities. This prohibition serves to safeguard our country from becoming a dumping ground for foreign waste. Finally, the bill provides specific penalties for failure to include and implement waste to energy strategy whenever feasible, for failure to perform the regulatory roles of the concerned government agencies, and for non-compliance with the standards and requirements under the law. To strict enforcement of these penalties, we send a clear message that adher adherence to the law and its requirement is non-negotiable, fostering a culture of responsibility and accountability. Before closing, Mr. President, I would like to express my gratitude to my co-authors, Senators Sherwin Gachalian, Francis Tolentino, and Bong Revilla, as well as Senate President Mig Zubiri, and to all our stakeholders particularly the DOE, NSWMC, DNR, DOH, DALG, NEDA, PPP Center, for their invaluable contribution in crafting this bill. Mr. President, my dear colleagues, there is a way to address both our energy and garbage problems. Let us weigh the advantage of opening our doors to this technology that creates energy out of our waste. Hindi po ito basta-basta gagamitin ng ibang bansa without considering its risk and problems. It is high time we adjust our policies to welcome this technology and move forward a, towards a greener approach in waste management and energy generation. Thank you, Mr. President and my dear colleagues.